Hey everyone, welcome to my video. So today I'm going to talk about the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this is just a, a really great tool. Um, it's basically an interactive computing environment that's going to allow you to um, do live coding directly within the browser. So you can kind of work interactively and edit and run code directly in the browser of, you know, in a notebook. Um, you can also do things like add text and markdown within the notebook itself so you can document your analysis. Um, you know, if you need to provide instructions so uh, your analysis can be reproducible, um, you know, or to tell a uh, to tell the story of analysis or whatever it may be. You can also do things like add plots, equations, images, videos, interactive widgets, a lot of other stuff within there as well. So throughout this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the Jupyter Notebook, so what it is, uh, how you can use it, and, and some of its uh, what I found most uh, useful functionality. So to get started, the first thing you want to make sure to do is uh, make sure you have Python and Jupyter installed on your computer. So if you don't already have this, I'd recommend just installing the Anaconda Python distribution. Uh, this is going to come both with Python and, and Jupyter already, uh, but also a number of other libraries and packages pre-installed and some other functionality that's, uh, that's really useful. So to do this, uh, you can just go to your, your browser. If you search for Anaconda Python, it should really be this first link that pops up. If you click on that and click download and follow the instructions, you should uh, you should be all set. I'll also create a video walking through uh, the installation process as well and post it in the comments so you can see what that actually looks like. Now once you have Python and Jupyter installed, we can go ahead and launch, launch Jupyter. So I'm on a Mac, so the way I do this is I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to type Jupyter Notebook and press enter. If you're on a Windows machine, you should be able to uh, use the command prompt uh, for this as well. So, uh, so what this does is it's uh, going to launch a uh, basically a web server at the localhost port 8888 for me. And the one thing I just want to make note of is that uh, you want to keep your terminal open. Um, you don't want to close down your server. So you need to make sure that you keep your terminal open and, and you don't close it down. So me, I'm going to minimize it, which is fine to do, but you don't want to uh, close it. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. All right, so once you've launched Jupyter, this is the dashboard, that, uh, the interface that pops up. And so the first thing you want to do is actually just navigate to where you're going to be uh, either creating your notebook or where an existing notebook that you want to open exists. So for me, I'm going to go to desktop. Um, I have this folder called Introduction to Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to click in there. And now I want to create a new Jupyter Notebook uh, within this folder. So to do that, I'm just going to go up to the right here and I'm going to click on New. And under Notebooks, I'm going to click on Python 3. And when I, when I do this, it's going to create a new uh, Jupyter Notebook with a Python 3 kernel. And basically what this means is, is that the kernel is basically the computation engine that executes the code within the, the notebook. So um, basically what this means is this is the language that's going to execute the code within your, within your Jupyter Notebook. So um, you know, this kind of this defaults to Python, but you can also install different kernels uh, as well. So if you wanted to run, say, like uh, MATLAB or R or some other language within the Jupyter Notebook, you could do that. I'm not going to go over it today. I'm just going to go over the uh, Python, but that, that is an option. So if I click there, what you're going to see is now a new notebook uh, pops up. And the default title or name for uh, a notebook is just untitled. So the first thing you might want to do is actually just rename this notebook. So you can do that by just by clicking up here where it says untitled, what the name is click on that, this pop-up occurs where I can rename the notebook, and I'm just going to call this one Introduction to Jupyter, and press enter, and now it's renamed. So now if I go back here, what you're going to see is that there's a new Jupyter notebook file uh, in this folder called Introduction to Jupyter, and uh, the file type is uh, .ipymb. That's just a Jupyter notebook um, file type. So going back here. Um, all right, so one of the first things that I would recommend you doing if you're completely new to Jupyter is actually just going up to help and clicking on the user interface tour. It doesn't take long at all, but it's really useful just to kind of familiarize yourself with the entire layout. So I would encourage you to, to do that uh, from the, uh, if, you're, if you're new, just to start with. Like I said, it doesn't take long. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is a cell. And a cell is basically where you're going to do 
most of your work within a Jupyter notebook. And, and this is a cell. So if I click in there, um, you know, I can I can do various things. So there's kind of different types of cells. And the two main types I'm going to talk about are code cells and markdown cells. So if I click in this particular cell, if I look up here at this drop-down menu, I see that it says code. And this means that I can run uh, Python code right within this cell. So I could do something like print hello and press run and um, it executes that Python code. Now this cell, you can see up here, this is a cell of, uh, of type code. If I click on the drop down menu, there's some other options for me. Um, I can select markdown and this is really useful because it allows me to put markdown within uh, my Jupyter notebook. So, you know, to, to give you some examples, um, I can put just straight text. So like markdown cells allow me to write markdown, easy. Um, uh, I can create headers. So the way you do this in markdown is just uh, with a pound sign. So like um, heading, I can create a, you know, a, a smaller heading by using two pound signs. So like call heading two, even just one more smaller one, heading three. Uh, I can create bullets. So to do this in Markdown, I would do say an asterisk space and then type bullet one. Uh, I can create a second bullet and maybe I want this bullet's text to be in bold. So to have bold text, I would start with two asterisks. Uh, I put the, and put the text I want to be in bold and then end with two asterisks. So bullet two and then end with two asterisks. Um, and then maybe this third bullet I create, I want to be in italics. So kind of similar to the one above, um, I would start with a single asterisk and then the text I want in italics and then end with a single asterisk. And that'll put that bullet in italics or that text in between the two asterisks in italics for me. Um, you know, another thing I might want to do is I might want to have some text um, that's, uh, that when I click on it, it will link to a particular web page. So like as one example, uh, I could do something like this where I have uh, text that says Jupyter Notebook and it will link to this, this web page, the Jupyter web page. I'm not gonna go over the details of the, the markdown syntax in here, but uh, there's a number of, of useful tutorials and uh, online that you can find. And then um, you know something else I might wanna do is I might wanna add an image within a, within a markdown cell. So I can do that with syntax that looks like this, this, uh, this Python image.png. Uh, this is, uh, this image already exists in this folder. So I can just use this syntax to then, uh, to include that image in, in this markdown cell. So now when I run this cell, what happens is you'll see that, um, I have text in here that I wrote. Um, I have kind of various sized headings. I've created a you know, a few different bullets. The second one is in bold, given by using the two asterisks. Third one's in italics by using the single asterisks. I have this text that when I click on it, as you see it links to the Jupyter Notebook uh, homepage. And I've also included, um, and I've also uh, added this image to this cell as well. Uh, so again, I'm not gonna go over all the details around um, markdown syntax, but if you did something like, um, just Google the Markdown tutorial, you click on any one of these top links, uh, you'll see you know, outlines and tutorials on the various Markdown syntax. So you can even see here that one of the first things that pops up is how to create headings within Markdown by using this pound sign. So you can see the Markdown here and the rendered output here is just a different kind of sized heading. Right. And so um, taking advantage of these uh, Markdown cells is really useful because it allows you to actually structure your notebook into kind of logical sections and subsections, as well as uh, summarize what you're doing or the results that you've had or provide uh, bullets of, of um, you know, the outputs of your analyses or say you uh, wanted to provide instructions to somebody so that they could replicate uh, your analysis within a notebook. You can add, um, you can kind of structure your notebook that way. You can also add in um, links like this to references, um, you know, for your analysis or uh, that you find are important for your particular notebook, as well as add in, you know, images or even videos and, and other things as well. Um, so uh, all within these markdown cells. So it's useful to kind of get familiar with at least the basics of markdown. 
um, you know, particularly just the ones I, I showed here. So you can structure your notebook uh, in this way. All right, so now that we've gone over the, the kind of two primary cell types we're gonna be talking about, um, let's talk a little bit more about um, cells and, and how to create them, delete them, execute cells, things of that nature. So the first question might be, how do I create a new cell? And to do this, it's really easy. If I just go up to this toolbar here, I can click this plus sign and it'll create a new cell for me. And I can click it multiple times and I can create multiple cells. Uh, now say I wanted to, um, to delete a cell. So you see the cell is highlighted. I can just go up here and click edit and delete the cell. Uh, just a quick keyboard shortcut that you can also do is press D. So D is in Delta, you press it twice and it will also delete a cell, the cell that's highlighted. So here I can press D twice do it again, 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 you can see that I'm now deleting those, those cells. Um, if we look at the, the toolbar up here, uh, you also see a, a few different things. So one of which is this moving selected cells up or down. And so I have this cell is now selected. I can move it up and you can see I can move it up or down. I can also select say this cell and I can move it down so I can change kind of the sequential ordering of the cells. So one thing that's really important to note um, when you're dealing with Jupyter Notebooks is the ordering of the cells themselves don't really matter. What matters is the execution order of the cells. And so what do I mean by that? Um, so say I create this new cell and I do something like X equals one and I run that cell and then I X and I run that cell. So what do I what do I see here? So this is the first cell that I uh, code cell that I executed. So that has a one here, and then then I ran this cell, and it has a two. So that means that I first ran this cell, then I ran this cell, and then I ran this cell. Now let's say I did something like um, X equals four, and I ran this cell. Notice how it says four here. Now I can actually go back to this cell, and if I rerun it, what am I gonna see? I'm gonna see x equals four and it's five. So even though this cell where I defined x to equal four comes underneath this cell in, in the, the physical ordering of the cells themselves, um, that's okay, because the execution order is this cell ran first, four, and then, then this cell ran after it. So um, that's how I can uh, that's how this works. So you need to be really careful when you're dealing with multiple cells and you're kind of shifting the order um, of the cells or even the order that you're running the cells because uh, it can mess you up if you uh, defined or redefined a variable or did something of that nature. Uh, something else to note when you're dealing with these cells is that um, if I delete, say like I delete all these cells, cells um, all of those, let me create a new one real quick. Um, even though those cells are deleted, the, the code that was in the cells were still executed. So to give an example, if I look at X and I run this, X is still a defined variable. And this cell is still the sixth cell um, to be executed, even though I've deleted the other cells. So by deleting the other cells, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't take away from the, it doesn't take away or uh, you can't interpret it as that that code never was run. So that code still was run even though you no longer have visibility into those cells because you deleted them. So just something to, to be aware of uh, as you're kind of moving these cells around or even deleting them. You have to kind of backtrace the, um, the order of the cells that were executed if you really want to kind of reverse engineer what was done or why you might be seeing a particular output. All right. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is how to execute cells. Um, so there's multiple different ways to do this. Let me just change this to markdown real quick. Okay, so, and I'll run this cell. All right, so um, there's, a, there's a few things. So if I go up to cell here and I click on it, there's a number of different ways I can execute and run cells. So these first three um, are gonna, which you're gonna use probably the majority of the time. And I'm gonna talk about uh, those just in, in one second. Um, and then there's these bottom three, um, which you'll use probably less frequently, but they still have their, uh, their occasions to where they're useful. So run all, all this basically means is when I click run all, it's gonna run every single cell within uh, my notebook. 
if uh, if I click run all above, it's going to run all the cells that are above the cell that is highlighted within my notebook. And if I click run all below, it's going to run every cell that is below a particular cell uh, that I have highlighted within my notebook. So as an example, you can see that right here, um, you know, this bottom, uh, this bottom cell is highlighted. So if I click like run all above, it's actually going to just run every single uh, uh, cell above it. All right. Um, so then kind of digging in a little bit to these first three, um, you know, uh, what, what do these actually mean and how are you going to use them? So each one of these threes has a keyboard shortcut. So I could go up here and I could click on uh, every time I want to run a cell, I could click on one of these three. But it's really time consuming and learning the shortcut is really just going to be advantageous. So uh, I'm going to go over the shortcuts for how to do each one of these. But uh, whatever I go over in the shortcut, um, you know, it's going to be the exact same thing if I had just clicked it. So uh, let me just make this a header. All right. So um, the first is going to be uh, uh, shift and return. So say I have, let me just move this piece of code down here. Okay. So say I want to execute this code, I can hold down shift and press enter. And what happens? You see that this, uh, this cell executed, see uh, the, the order incremented. Um, and now the highlighted cell is the one underneath it. So I executed this and then just selected the, uh, the cursor to the next cell underneath it. If I go back up here and I press not shift return, but now control return, what happens? You see that the cell executed, so this went up to eight. Again, I can do it again, it goes up to nine. So the cell itself is executing, but uh, the cursor of the highlighted cell is gonna remain the, the same as the cell that I'm on. And then the third thing is if you click uh, hold option and press return, what happens? It's going to execute this current cell and it's going to actually create a new cell and select it underneath. So now there's two cells underneath it. If I hold down option and press return, it executes that cell. It creates a new cell directly underneath it and it highlights that cell. So that's how you would, um, uh, that's how you would execute uh, various cells in, in a couple different flavors and a couple different ways to do it. Um, and I typically use the keyboard shortcuts, uh, but again, you could go up here and do kind of run cell and select below, insert below, or just run the cell. Uh, but uh, for the sake of time, learning the shortcuts, I think is, is useful. And so going forward in this video, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just use the shortcuts just for the sake of time and ease. All right. So uh, now that we have kind of the basic idea of kind of creating and executing cells, a different cells type, I want to talk a little bit about the modal user interface uh, within Jupyter. So what what is this? Um, so within Jupyter Notebook, uh, Jupyter Notebook has what's called a modal user interface. And basically what this means is that the keyboard is going to do different things depending on which mode the notebook is in. And there's really just two modes um, uh, that the notebook has, the Jupyter has. One is called edit mode and one is called command mode. Edit mode is what we've been working in thus far. So when you want to go into uh, the individual cell and, um, and type something in there, whether it be markdown or Python code or, or anything else, um, that's what's called edit mode. So when I want to edit and work directly uh, in a, inside an individual cell. And so the way you can tell that you're in, in edit mode is if I just click in a cell, that's going to automatically take me into edit mode. And I can tell because the border um, and the outline of the cell is a green. And so if it's green, that indicates that it's in edit mode. The other uh, indicator is if I go up here to the top right, I see this, um, this pin. If that pin pencil icon is there, it also means I'm in edit mode. I can also hover over it, hold it there for a second, and you can see it's in edit mode. Now, if I want to uh, switch modes um, into command mode, which is the other mode, uh, I can just, if I'm in edit mode, if I press escape, it's going to take me to command mode. So notice just what happened there. When I press escape, the border, the outline of this cell changed. It was green and now it's gray and it has this blue over here. The other indicator uh, you can see is that that pencil, that pen pencil icon that was at the top right, that is, that is now gone. I can still hover over, so if I hover, hover over where it would be, it shows it on my command mode. 
So that's the indicator that I'm in command mode. If that pencil pin icon is gone and the outline is gray with a blue, um, blue coloring at the side, whereas if I'm in edit mode, it'll be green. And so if I'm in a command mode and I want to switch back to edit mode, um, I can just press enter and it's going to take me back to edit mode. And if I want to go from edit to command mode, I press escape. So that's kind of how I toggle between the two modes. Now, command mode is useful for when you want to uh, edit um, kind of the notebook as a whole or um, at least part of the, the notebook itself versus like an individual cell and kind of working with an individual cell. So, you know, what, what's an example of what might this look like? So say I do x equals, you know, 1, y you know, equals 2, and then... Um, you know, x plus y. <clears throat> All right, so right now if I click in this cell, I'm in edit mode, but if I press escape, now I'm in command mode. So when I'm in command mode, one thing I can do is I can highlight multiple cells. So if I hold shift and then press up, you know that I can uh, I highlight kind of the current cell and the cell above it. I can press up again and I can highlight the next cell. And so what is one thing I could do if I, if I highlighted multiple cells like this? If I hold down shift and press M, M as in merge, it'll merge all three of those cells together. So that's one example of something that you could do in like command mode where you're editing either the, the larger notebook or kind of a larger part of the notebook beyond just an individual cell. One thing um, that is useful to look at is if you go to help and you click on keyboard shortcuts, what this is going to show you is a number of different shortcuts that you can use um, if you're in command mode or um, if you're in edit mode. So I'm not going to go through all of them because there's there's a lot, but um, I definitely encourage you to uh, select this and just go through and play around with it a little bit to kind of familiarize yourself with some of the things that you can do within the two different modes. Um, you know, a couple, couple ones to maybe note. Um, that, that I use uh, a lot and I might, even, I might use throughout this tutorial is uh, change cell to code and change cell to markdown. So if I'm in command mode, if I press Y, it'll change the, the cell, the current cell uh, into, uh, into a coding cell. And if I press M, it'll change it to a markdown cell. So let me just close this out and show you what I mean here. So right now, um, uh, if I click in this, oh, let me go down to this cell. Uh, I'm currently in edit mode, so I'm going to press escape. It takes me to command mode. So now that I'm in command mode, um, if I press M, what do I what do I notice? So right now it's currently um, the cell is type code. If I go to command mode and press M, it'll change it to markdown. And then if I press Y while I'm in command mode, it'll change it to code. So this is kind of a quick shortcut that if I'm working within a particular cell, um, I can quickly press escape to shift to command mode and then M to make it a markdown cell or Y if I want to make it kind of switch it back to a coding cell. So that's just a, a useful um, kind of little toggle or, or keyboard shortcut that I, I find useful and I, I use pretty frequently. All right, um, so next, uh, a couple more just useful things uh, that I'll kind of categorize into a, the useful things category. So again, I'll just uh, switch over to Markdown using that keyboard shortcut because we just went over and execute this, uh, this um, that cell. So a couple of really useful um, you know, other things within the Jupyter Notebook that, that I use a pretty decent amount. Uh, one is a tab completion. So I can use tab completion uh, to complete variable names. So if I'm typing out a variable and I, um, you know, it's long or I can't remember the exact spelling or I can't remember exactly how I defined it, I can press tab and it will auto complete it for me or show me the options of ones that fit what I've typed so far. Uh, I can also do it to show uh, available methods. Uh, I can even do it to uh, complete a, a file path. So I'll go over kind of what uh, each one of these means and, and some examples of how it's used. Uh, something else I find useful is this question mark is using a question mark. So I can put a question mark after a function and it's going to show me the and it will show me the doc string for that function. So if you don't know what a doc string is, just think about it as um, just some documentation that's going to describe what that piece of Python code does. Uh, I can also add a, a question mark before or after any variable name uh, to get more general information about that variable. Uh, if I if I put 
two question marks after a function name, it's going to not only just show me the doc string, but also the source code if it's available. And then just um, a, another kind of useful way to get at the doc string uh, for a particular function will be to press like shift and shift tab. It'll show me the doc string. So uh, let's walk through a couple examples of you know, how this is used in practice and what this might look like. So if I go to the cell and I do say import just um, say date time execute it. I've imported the, the date uh, imported date time. If I start to type out say uh, date and then at this point now I will just press tab and notice how it auto completes for me. Uh, kind of similarly I can do uh, dot press tab I can see what is now available click date um, and then again see what's available so I want to see what methods are now available. I press tab and I see all the kind of the, the various methods that are now available to me. So I might do something like, um, um, you know, today as an example, and I click that. And now let's see, put parentheses and I'll put in, you know, this particular uh, method gives me today's current, um, current date. Uh, so, but if I did, you know, but it, say I didn't know that, I could just uh, do this. And if I put the question mark there right after that method and I run it, uh, I, I get the um, the type and the doc string. So this is a built-in uh, function or method. So this is a method for date time. And then a uh, doc string, uh, you see it just uh, gives me the current date or date time. So I'll go ahead and close it out. Uh, this also works for functions you define within the Jupyter Notebook itself. So just as an example, say I created a function called like, um, you know, example, you know, function, uh, x, y, and this just returns x plus y. So if you don't know how um, functions work in Python yet or how to define them, don't worry about it. This is just a, you know, this is kind of the basic template for how you would create a function within Python. Um, okay, so, you know, now I created this kind of really quick, simple function. If I start typing example, I can press tab. Again, it's going to auto-complete for me. And then at the end of this, if I add two question marks and run that, uh, I, I didn't include a doc string when I uh, created this function, but you can see the source right here. So you can actually see the, the function definition itself in the code. Uh, this is type function. So uh, that's an example just uh, you know, of, of using uh, double question marks to see the, the source code for a particular function. And also how you can do it for, uh, for a function that you create within uh, the Jupyter Notebook itself that you're working within. Um, you can also use tag complete for, um, for variables. So say I did something like created a variable called say just a variable for the sake of simplicity and I run that and then I start typing V-A-R-I uh, and at this point I'm like, well, what did I, what did I name that again? I can press tab and it will auto complete it for me. And in um, that, that works. I can also do, um, as before, add a question mark before or after the variable name, in this case, uh, variable. If I add it before, it'll give me some other general information about that variable. So you know, uh, its type is int, just a, as an example. Um, and then the last piece I wanted to pull out, uh, highlight in this section is just shift tab is another kind of way to see the doc string. So if I go here, let me just copy this over. All right, so at this point, if I want to see the doc string, another option for me is just to hold down shift and press tab. And you'll see that the doc string pops up as well. So another useful kind of way to get at the doc string. Um, <clears throat> tabs can also be used to uh, to create file paths or to finish uh, autocomplete uh, your file path. So like just as an example, I'm going to start typing um, users um, forward slash, uh, and I press tab, it shows me uh, you know, I have two options, shared and mic, I'll click mic, and then um, maybe I press tab again, and it shows me um, now what's available, maybe I type D, and you see desktop, documents, downloads, uh, maybe I select my desktop, and there I go. So I can use uh, this tab completion to uh, show me kind of the available folders, uh, or to auto complete a, a file, um, a file path for me. All right.
Um, uh, another really useful thing within the Jupyter Notebooks are what's called magic commands. Uh, create a new section for you here. All right, and so magic commands are just uh, specific commands that are available in the Jupyter Notebook that make um, programming certain tasks uh, much easier. So these are not standard Python commands, um, but they are available to you within the, the Jupyter Notebook. And they come in, in uh, they all start with uh, a percentage sign, and they come in two different types. One's called a line magic, which just starts with a single percentage sign, and the other is a cell magic, which starts with uh, two percentage signs. So line magic, best way to think about this is it just works with a particular line. A cell magic will be applied to the entire cell. So what are some example um, magics that, uh, that I find really useful? So the first one, um, would actually just be ls magic, and so this, uh, you know, when working with magics, this is really useful because all this does is it it's going to print out all your available magic uh, magic commands. So here are all my available line magics, and here are all my available cell magics. So um, a really good one just to kind of print off at the start, especially when you're dealing with magics and are unfamiliar. And, and then you can explore every one of these. So uh, another really useful one is, is who. So say, um, you know, I find this to be useful, but say I didn't know so uh, who is right here and I want to explore a little bit more. So kind of revisiting the prior section, I can just do a percentage who and then add a, um, a question mark at the end of it. And if I run this, what do I see? Uh, the doc string for who, and I see uh, some documentation around what this does. So who, it just prints out all the interactive variables uh, that I have, uh, you know, and there's some some formatting. So if I go back and now I run the who magic command, you'll see um, I have uh, a number of variables, um, you know, uh, currently defined in this notebook. So date, time, example, function, uh, the variable I call variable, uh, x and y. Uh, another really useful one is called time. So you can see it right here. So if I do a percentage time and a question mark, let's see. So what this basically, basically does is just allows me to um, uh, figure out the time it takes to execute a particular Python statement or expression. So as an example, uh, what might this look like? So if I do... Uh, magic time, and I do something like I want to create a list. So LST equals you know, I for I in range, say 100, and I execute this. It tells me how long it took to execute this piece of code here. Uh, another kind of similar one is what's called time it. So time and then it. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to tell me the, the time execution of a particular Python statement or expression. Uh, a couple differences. So one, this can be used as both uh, a line magic or it could be a cell magic. So I could um, figure out the time to execute a, the entire cell or just a single line. Uh, the other thing about uh, the time it is it has a couple different parameters that I can input in. And basically what this is going to do is going to run, um, you know, a number of loops repeating, uh, repeating the, um, a number of loops running that particular expression or statement, and then it's going to print out like the mean and the standard deviation um, for uh, of the time it took. So it's um, you know, it, it's it'll just give you a little bit more information of what you can expect or how robust kind of the initial time uh, estimate uh, took to give you a better idea of how long it might actually take you to run a particular uh, cell or Python statement expression. So if I Kind of similarly here, if I do time it instead of time and I run this, it takes a little bit longer. But as you'll see, I get the kind of mean plus or minus standard deviation of seven runs each of a thousand loops. So I'm still getting the, uh, the time to execute this uh, particular piece of code, but I'm running it multiple times and getting kind of the, the mean and the plus or minus standard deviations to give me a better idea of what might that actually look like. Um, 
Let's see here. And then um, probably the, the last one I want to go over um, is really useful, especially if you're going to be doing data analysis and looking at kind of graphs and plots within the Jupyter Notebook. And it's called uh, um, matplotlib inline. So the way I would run uh, run this command is say mat, I'm sorry, matplotlib, and then I'll do space inline. All right. And what this is telling me is it uh, it's going to now render um, you know, my uh, these dis these um, displays or graphs uh, figure objects that that matplotlib creates. Um, directly within the notebook itself versus creating like a pop-up that you would you would then close down. So uh, what's an example of this? So if I just go to, let me just copy and paste a couple examples of uh, Python creating a graphs within with Python. So if I go here, again, this is just copy and pasting from the matplotlib website. I can create, uh, I can run that code, and I won't go over the specifics of the data visualization, but I have other videos on uh, doing data visualization within Python. You see that when I run this, it renders it directly within the notebook itself. So again, really useful because you can um, kind of look at your data and output your graphs and your analyses that you're doing directly within the notebook. Uh, it is important to note that uh, these are not static images. So I, I, I mentioned earlier on that Kind of the interactivity and the uh, the dynamic kind of ability interactivity within the notebook is, is really useful. So uh, what do I mean by that? So I can rerun this cell. I can switch some things around within this cell or rerun it with different data and I'll get different charts. So like you know, just as one example, uh, the X label here in this top one, notice how the X uh, axis is at name time. You know, this is where the that particular x-axis uh, label is is defined. I could switch that to just say something like x, you know, label, and rerun it. And notice how uh, it's no longer time; it's now x label. Uh, but there's a number of different like types of charts and graphs that I can create with Python um, that I can put within this this notebook. So here's just like another one I'm copying and pasting from the Matplotlib website. I run this, and I can see. A stacked bar chart. All right, um, and then one of the last things I want to go over is just um, uh, the command line. So let's say command line. All right. So those of you who are used to dealing with the command line, uh, basically any command that works in the command line, you can use within the Jupyter notebook. All you have to do is start that command with a um, with an exclamation point. So as an example, if I do exclamation point ls and run that, it's going to run run it just as it would on the command line. Um, or if I wanted to do, say, um, pwd, I'll start with an exclamation point, run that, and I'll, it'll give me my primary working directory. So if you're used to working with the command line, um, you can do that within the, the notebook itself too, just by prefixing um, any command with an exclamation point. Uh, and then uh, finally, there's a number of different ways that you can export and save a Jupyter Notebook. So if I go up here, click on File, and say Download As, you know, you see, you know, HTML, um, just a, a, a regular notebook file, a Python file, PDFs, you know, various kind of options of how I can download this file and share it out with people. So um, if I do say, like as an example, HTML, I can save it as an HTML file. Um, download that. Now, now I have uh, this notebook saved as an HTML file. I can share it out with people, or if I open it up within my browser, you can see you know, this is now opened up as a as an HTML uh, file. So really useful. Um, let's see here. Uh, you know, another just kind of really quick thing that I found useful is if I go to View and then toggle line numbers. You know, uh, what you'll see here is the line numbers within each uh, cell of the Jupyter Notebook. So that's really useful because sometimes you, um, you know, you just want to know the particular line within a cell. And so you can do that again just by view, goal, view uh, sorry, going to view, toggle line numbers. I can remove them just by kind of selecting the same thing over again. So, uh, so I hope this was useful for you. If you liked the video, please um, do hit the like button. Uh, also, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my, my channel uh, and, and please post in the comment section. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the video or any questions you have. I'd also love to hear about um, 
you know what you're interested in uh in seeing so any kind of other videos or uh tutorials you like to see me create um what you hope to learn or just uh in general what you find interesting or what you're interested in learning about the jupyter notebook or python or anything of that nature so thank you